Hello. Good afternoon. It's Tuesday, which means another drawing video from me. A uh, special subject. Let me turn up the light. Today's a special subject because uh, Robin sent me this picture of a buffalo. Um, a bunch of buffalo. Her and her mother were taking a big drive, and they said they saw no people, but they saw lots of buffalo. I thought that was so cool. You don't see them very often around here in Northern California. Um, so, wow, that was really special. So thank you so much for sending me this picture. Um, now I'm going to have fun drawing it, and hopefully you can draw it at home as well. I'm using a digital canvas again here, but um, but I'm going to keep it on the pencil mode so it kind of looks like I'm drawing with a pencil. Um, so if you're at home, grab a pencil, grab a paper. You can use pen too, but it's harder to erase if you make a mistake. Um, so let's get going. I don't know if you can hear my music in the background, but I've been going. Might be nice. All right, so the first thing that I want to start with on this is there's uh, several buffalo, and I can make a decision whether I want to try to draw all of them in the scene. just want to focus on that one buffalo. And I think for starters, I'm just going to focus on that one buffalo because I'm interested. I've never drawn a buffalo. So instead of drawing five buffalo, I'm going to start with one and then maybe we'll put it into a scene at the end. So there's that. And here we go. Let me make this a little bigger. Cool. So I'm going to start with that. All right. I think one good way to do it might be to include the background just for a measurement. Uh, what I mean is that line right in front of his face that uh, separates the grass from the trees. So I'm going to draw that. And uh, let's see. Then I'm going to maybe draw even the top of the trees here just a little bit. Um, I don't know, maybe because I've never drawn a buffalo, I don't really know its proportions. And maybe I should use something kind of abstract, like the background, to keep me in line so I don't overemphasize anything. So now that I have that, those general boundaries of the top of the trees and the top of the grass there, the dry grass, I can try to sketch the shape of those trees around the, the bull's head. Bull. Do you call a um, buffalo a bull? I'm not so sure. So the buffalo's head goes up um, a little bit below halfway between these two lines. Line, and I can kind of come down, and then it goes below this line um, a little bit like this. And then his uh, mouth kind of goes straight down. I'm just kind of outlining his head now. This line of his, um, um, where his neck starts to go down from his chin, looks like it's directly below where the top of his head kind of goes up to that hump. So I can do that and use the, see this measurement between those two lines. Those are the types of things you want to look for when you're trying to draw something uh, semi-accurate is to look at where where do things line up? Where can I use a uh, measuring tool? So I'm gonna draw the horn now. Even though it's small, I just wanna kind of place my, give my brain a placement for which what I'm looking at here. Sometimes a, an eye helps. Cool. <laughs> Sweet. That's a good start. And now I want to take the, the line of the back and 
kind of approximate that whole line. It might be nice to do it. There's something to be said about drawing something in one fluid line instead of, um, yeah, I could draw like this, which I kind of haven't quite been drawing this stuttered. But I could draw with little tiny lines like that. Or I could try to nail the back in one line. And that, at least for me, that's kind of a goal I'm trying to get to as an artist, is be able to be more confident with each stroke and not have to second guess and erase. Um, so instead of drawing a bunch of little lines, maybe try to do where you can a big, strong line. All right. Now, I, I think that line of his his tummy where it hits the um where the the border between the grass and his stomach there i want to try to draw that tummy tell i have little kids the, some of the words i use blow his little tummy <clears throat> man oops so his foot goes down like this and that line of his tummy goes around there. So you just want to be really careful and not rush when you're, especially in these first stages. The more fun, less, the more fun part for me at least is after I get this kind of skeleton drawn on, I can actually start shading and doing fine detail work. And that's kind of a fun part for me. Um, but this part is really important that you concentrate and you try to get everything, you try to imagine where you're supposed to draw a line before you draw it. So you're thinking about almost every line that you're doing. Um, it's just hard to do when I'm talking. But um, Now I'm gonna draw that shape that is between his legs and the shadow, something like that. Okay. I almost feel like I made him too, I gave him too much of a stomach there. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. I think a stronger eraser, what is this? There we go. Sweet. Yeah, that looks better. Now I want to do, um, maybe he wear his back leg. Um, kind of comes out like that. And then straight down, his, his very rear leg goes straight back. And then this one comes down and across. Okay. Hey, I think that's pretty good for his feet. <clears throat> Once again, I've never drawn a buffalo before, so I'm, I'm having to be extra careful. Say, if I drew something like a cat, I've drawn not a ton of cats, but I've probably drawn 30 cats, at least. So I've kind of got an idea of where their face is and where their nose sits and their legs and that kind of thing. And I have a cat, so I've pet. I've petted enough to know certain things about it. Um, but a buffalo, I've really, I've never drawn, and I've never touched in person. I've seen a few off the side of the road, just like this one. So we gotta be extra careful. All right, so now that there's a dark black where the, f where, uh, the front leg is, so I'm gonna try to outline that area um, and maybe see where I went wrong on the horn there. Um, so yeah, just, um, so I wanna look at the area, look at the line that separates the colors. So um, maybe if I get this small again, oops, I get this small again, I'm talking about here. Uh, where is this? Okay. Um, that and then put this one behind there we go so now starting on his back hip uh, there's a line here ish of the brightest not uh oranges it's kind of like a grayed out light 
light gray orange um, and now there's this little pocket of dark dark color right here so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of shade that in I'm gonna shade in the darkest colors only on his leg at the bottom it comes up and this is gonna be also a slightly darker color all the way down his leg it looks like so I'm gonna go ahead and color in that leg all the way down and his back leg is even a little darker so I'll push a little harder on his back leg all right um, this area on his butt is darker but not as dark as his leg so yeah you kind of have to think of like a scale so if up here I'll draw a scale um, let's split it into four let's say so the darkest we can go is if I fill it in like this um, the lightest we can go is leave it white like that um, so for the next couple let's give it five gradations so the lightest is on the right so we go darkest to lightest the next one might be like this where the lines are close together um, maybe the next one oops next one is more like this where they're a little bit further apart then we just got like a light shade. I could do a light shade, maybe like this. There. So now I have five different values I can use from one being the darkest, two is a little lighter, three, four. Sometimes it's helpful to have that on your page. So now I'm going to do everything that's in the number one value range. So I'm looking around for everything that's pure black on him which is this kind of shape here. So I'll color that in nice and dark. And of course I can go between these value ranges. I don't have to stick to five, but thinking of them starting out with those five and then I can adjust slightly. Um, that's a good idea. So Here's where I can kind of follow the pattern of his fur, which is kind of dripping down. So as I'm coloring in these areas, I'm thinking about which direction I want my lines to go, because that'll influence the end drawing. Even if I draw over them, I'll still see that a little bit. So think about which way, which way you want your lines to go. So I'm just kind of coloring in where I see the darkest black. His nose gets a little brighter, so I'm going to try to dodge the nose there. All right. Well, anything else that's black, maybe right above the horn. Like that. And then maybe uh, up, up around. Uh, let me move this just in case anybody's saying anything. Maybe up around the back of his shoulder, it gets, it's kind of dark, but not quite as dark, so I'll do a letter. Uh, and then there's like kind of a ridge at the top. All right, so I'll leave it at that for the, for the darkest dark. That's our number one. Now let's move to number two, which is kind of uh, been almost all the way filled in, but not quite. So I'm gonna do everything that's almost black, but actually I see kind of a really dark brown. So that's that area kind of goes around. Let's fill in the black a little bit more just to be sure. All right, and then maybe coming up the stomach, there's some of that dark brown, that level uh, two. And I'm saying brown, but I'm drawing with black and white. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking mostly of the darkness of the color, not of the color itself. Cause, all right, there we go. Maybe I think I did this eye a little high, so I'm gonna lower it and then color around it. So it looks like this is at least brown around the eye, if not black. All right, now I'll move on to color level three, 
or value level rather, which is going to be all the um, maybe middle, uh, the medium brown. So not quite the the brightest areas yet, but everything that's not super bright. I'm going to fill in now with this kind of medium filled in. Uh -huh. Like that. Um, the whole head, I think, doesn't go into highlights at all. So I'm going to fill in the rest of the head now because there's no real bright parts on his, on his head. Or maybe a little bit on his nose. So I'll leave a little bit of that there. Like that. Um, like that. There we go. Maybe I went a little crazy on this uh, chin beard, so I'll cut that back a little bit. There we go. <laughs> all right, and then once I've got all the that value in, now I can finish it up with just those simple lines for the for the um, maybe the lightest parts, and leave the white. leave the white just in the very brightest area. So that's going to be maybe his his foot, um, that one foot that's in the sun in the front, and then like at the top of his back. Cool. I think that's pretty good. I Maybe I could brighten up his eye a little bit um, because, because it's hard to see it and I want to, so. Make it white, which is much too bright. But now I can go back in and kind of shape it. Shape it more like reality. And then, yeah, there we go. So there, there's a, uh, a buffalo. What did I get wrong? It looks like maybe I have a, his head a little bit too thin. So I'm going to try to stick out his nose forward a little bit more like that. Um, erase the mouth that I did before. Let's fix that up with um, some revisions here. Fill that in. Remember my value, the dark, this was the darkest value, so I'm going to fill it all the way in. And then the top of his nose, maybe a medium dark. Now it looks a little bit too big, but that's okay. Now I'm just going to smooth out the whole thing by kind of breaking those barriers where I see them more smooth. Breaking those uh, outlines that I made before. And just looking at the buffalo as a whole, so that I can try to get it to kind of blend together a little bit nicer. Um, but then I think this buffalo is pretty much complete there. He's got this thing on his back. I don't know what it is, but... Okay, I'm going to erase my little notes up top. Let's see. Erase those notes. Keep the tree line. Now that we have Mr. Buffalo, I think, it, does he have a tail? It looks like he does have a tail, but it's really kind of hard to see. So I'm going to add that in. Yeah. <laughs> Cute little tail. Now that I got Mr. Buffalo in there, maybe I want to give him a family. So, um... Let's first I'll go make this big. Then I want to shrink him down and shrink this picture down. So now we can give him the rest of the scene. Um, that'll work. So something like, let's put him generally where he is, somewhere like this. 
give myself plenty of room to draw his brethren or her brethren. Okay. Okay. Nope. Sweet. Now I can draw the rest of that tree line. So that's what I'll do. Uh, there was a big tree right here. And then there's kind of some larger-ish trees here. And then it goes like that. So you kind of draw an irregular outline when you draw trees. That's kind of nice. Like that. All right. And then um, now I'll draw kind of the outline of the backs of all of them as one unit. I don't want to try to draw one and then the next and then the next like that. I want to kind of think of all of the... How many am I going to draw? One, two, three, four, and maybe one baby laying down. I want to try to get them all in one, one go here. So this one comes off of the back, this one, and I'm now I'm looking at the tree line and where it meets the top of the buffaloes here. Here's that last guy at the end. And then uh, now I'll try to split them up a little bit. So that first one has a leg that goes down. And I can use my buffalo I've already drawn as measurement. So it looks like the bottom of the shadow where the feet hit is about at that line here. So now I'll go around. Mm -hmm. There, and then this buffalo here, here's his smooth out those lines yeah something like that now we'll do the one right behind it which it's even smaller back there and then there's a, another one facing this way here's the line under its leg and then here's its head coming around it's got little horns and a little mouth. I think a defining factor of these buffalo is how strong their front leg is, and it makes that hump on their back. And also the, the males with the horns. Um, I think that's m my takeaway from drawing these guys is they look very strong. There we go. Draw that horizon line. And then there's the line of the mountain behind um, behind them. So that kind of goes through. And then there's a second mountain here. Something like that. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Hi, Rochelle. Thanks for watching, Rochelle. Um, it was nice to talk to you and everybody yesterday. All right, then let's try to start branches maybe on this tree a little bit. The ones I can see coming out of this tree over here. All right. Now I'm going to use that same value scale kind of system um, to do all the shadows. So. Um, not quite black here. A little bit of shadows below these guys. And then the same value system for the trees behind them. So the trees, of course, aren't white. Um, they seem to be their middle. Not, too, not black, not white, but somewhere in the middle. Maybe towards the dark end in certain areas. So that's I'm gonna go towards the dark end. Instead of doing lines like I did on the the uh, buffalo, I'm gonna do little circles, just to to make the trees a different shape than the buffaloes in front of them, because it's gonna get a little busy in there. So might as well come up with a rule for myself. When you're trying to draw a full picture with a bunch of things, you can make your own rules. Um with what you're going to do, like what kinds of lines I'm going to use for the trees, what kind of 
um, how dark I'm going to go for the sky or how light I want to keep it. And you kind of make up your own rules, whatever you and your intuition, your style is, will tell you what rules. And then you just follow them as best you can. And you can break your own rules too. But There we go. Little trees over here. Dip, 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 dip. And then maybe each different type of the tree I'm I'm doing a little bit differently. There we go. Cool, that's a good background. Now I'm that that far area, I'm just gonna lightly shade. Just to make that even another texture. So let's shade that far area. There's two power lines going over. I can choose to omit them. Sometimes I do. Or I could try to draw them. Let's see how it looks. You know, let's just omit them. Maybe we want them to look like they're in more of a natural environment and not um, have power lines in there. I don't know. The lines are kind of nice as, a, as an element in the picture, but I don't think they're necessary. So now it's time I'm going to sh start shading all of those other buffalo as a whole. So I'm just, just going to look at the black areas, which will be our, oops, um, which will be that value range one. So that, let's see, that'll be the darkest shading. So I'm going to go ahead and darkly shade what I see, the shapes that I see, which are kind of like that, this front leg. And I'm going to actually fix a few of the mistakes as I go, as far as like placement of things, I don't know. There. All right. Maybe give that one a tail. Um, now we'll go to that one that's facing us in the background, way back there. Um, you must have seen Robin drive by. All right, and then this front one. Uh, Rochelle, I haven't forgot the puppy dogs. I will get to a puppy dog maybe on Thursday. Um, I just got this awesome buffalo picture from Robin, so I wanted to do that one. Uh, there we go. Now uh, I'm gonna use maybe a lighter shade for everywhere that's brown. I'm just gonna leave the, the lightest area, so that's pretty much the top of their backs is the only part I'm not gonna do. So these back ones, since they're further away, oops, a general rule with things, at least for this style. Oh, why am I still racing? Stop. Um, oh my gosh. A general rule with this style is the further back things get, or the further away, um, the less detail you really have to put into them. So the closer things get more detail which means like more different values of darks and light more attention to the shapes but as you get closer as you get farther away you, you can kind of omit and take away some of that detail and that serves two purposes it makes it so you don't have to so it's more like real life because you're not focusing on most things you're not looking at um, and then also it uh what the heck? It brings the attention to the foreground and to whatever you w you want the viewer to pay attention to. So if I wanted, I could make everything look kind of blurry except for maybe this guy in the background and make him more carefully um, if I wanted to draw the viewer in like that. But that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep this main guy, the first guy we drew, as the center of attention here. Um... And then maybe a little bit of the details in the grass, and that might be, uh, 
That might be the last thing. Oh, let's get that little guy laying down too. I think there's one laying right here in the back. Just get something there. And then, um, yeah, if I look at the grass area, I don't, don't want to draw like grass like this because I don't really see that everywhere, anywhere. What I do see is kind of horizontal shadows of rocks um, f everywhere. So there's like this kind of thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw a few of those. Just scribble them in. Don't have to be very careful. But they're generally horizontal. Um, a, a little bit in the foreground up here to the right, I see some more varying shapes just because they're closer again. More variety as you get closer and less variety as I move away. And now there is little tiny maybe lines of grass that I can see coming in the same areas. So I'm going to go ahead and just scatter just so the viewer knows, oh, that's grass I'm looking at. I'm going to scatter little vertical lines here and there. Not too far back because if I draw them back here, it'll look like tall grass because it's supposed to be smaller as it goes away. There. Now that's looking good. There was one. That guy was a little strong. Okay. And you know what? I think that might as well do it. I think that's a good black and white drawing of a buffalo. So there you go, Robin. Um, we could we could print this out and use it as a coloring book page or something. So that's what I'm going to do um, to finish up this video is just quickly give it the colors um, that I think we should give it. So let's do the, um, I'm going to switch to a chalk. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks good. Um, and now I'm going to actually put some color into this. So let's start with that blue sky. Um, nice thing to do, I think, is go outside and just try to match the color of the actual sky instead of the sky you see in a picture. Because the camera usually changes it slightly. But oh, I'm just going to go off the picture here. Because today is a little bit overcast and this look, looks like the picture it was a nicer day, nicer day outside, at least a brighter day outside. I kind of like the overcast. Um, makes me feel less guilty for staying inside all day. Um, there we go. Uh, now I'm going to do um, the color of the grass there, which is kind of a very light tan to orange maybe so I'm not gonna put too much variation in these colors I'm just gonna kind of do it um, almost kind of novice or like a beginner way to do it which should be just one big block of color that doesn't really change and I'll start with that and if I have time maybe I'll do a little bit more so coloring this guy in I actually have been enjoying using nice, pe like thin, fine pens to do drawings. To look similar like this, and then I'll use watercolor because the pen doesn't react to water after it dries, and I'll use watercolor to color in my um, drawings, and that works pretty well. Um, now let's do the green trees. I'm kind of working outside in. Um, there is a couple colors of trees, so I'm going to try to honor that. There's this e more yellow green tree. Um, that's this guy here. Maybe a little bit actually brighter than that. A little yellower. Yeah, more like that. And then the, there's echoes of that maybe over there. And then there's a little bit bluer green, a little more saturated. Saturated just means more color, f like there's more pigment in the color. There's more, it's more, uh, so if you compare this green on the far left, that's maybe a little oversaturated. Whereas desaturated means maybe you're closer to gray. 
um, which is where a lot of more natural looking colors live. Um, most natural colors, are, except for maybe some flowers, most natural colors are pretty desaturated. Like this color green that I'm doing this tree, that looks like a more organic green. So I'm going to put that over here too. Kind of looking at the picture. And then there's the closest one that looks like the coolest tree, but still pretty desaturated. And I mean coolest, like I'm moving the slider from the green slightly over to the blue side of the green. There's a warm, there's warm greens um, or yellow greens. And then there's cool greens or blue greens. I'll add a little bit of lights in this tree too. Because it's the closest tree, I should give it the most detail, which means maybe a little bit of color variation. And I guess I can give, I can do some dark greens for some of these other ones at the bottom. There we go. Now all that's left is just a. Uh, the buffalo, huh? Actually, I could do that. Uh, let's do the background, which is again green, but this actually at the top is getting purple. That's I think in the uh, the old song about the purple mountains. This is what they're talking about here. It was oops, a little too dark. Was this purple that the haze of distance gives you and um, it's definitely got some green in there too, but I'm going to emphasize that purple and maybe I'll put um, some more of that desaturated green in there towards the front of the purple. Like that. Oops. Alright, something like that. And then there's actually really bright areas of tan it looks like that I'll add in to coming down the hill something like that something like that maybe even a little lighter all right I'll I'll live with that now final area is the buffalo. Now I'm going to look at for the brightest orange areas, which looks like maybe his back and coming around his stomach. Uh, a little bit maybe on his knee here and on his butt. Uh, this one way in the rear has some of that color and so the laying down on his like that. The orange kind of makes that back one look like a tiger. Um, so I want to go a little bit more brown, maybe a little more yellow. And darker now to actually let's do more red. Something like that for for this area of him. Okay, it looks like mm, a lot of these guys. I'm drawing, I'm coloring very quickly, so giving it that scribbly sort of look. Some people really like this look. I mean, I would rather, for me, I would rather draw cleaner, but I, um, I just like to get things down quickly so it ends up being scribbly. So that's not my goal necessarily. Uh, now I'm doing a lighter color for for the tops of them, maybe where the sun is hitting. Um, I'll do a little uh, even brighter one in a second, um, but I want to kind of work my way to the brightest colors. So now, bright brightest would be white, but I want to be a little bit below white. Um, white, you really you want to be careful with going too light or too dark really but I already used full black so I don't have to worry about going too dark 
All right, how's that? I think that looks pretty good. I could even lighten up my lines. <laughs> Look at this is just the colors. That's interesting. Um, but maybe I want the lines to be not quite black, maybe like somewhere like 87% black. That way I can go in now and darken the darkest areas again. Just giving it that much more contrast with the, with the shading. All right, one thing I kind of lost in here is his horn. So I'll go back real quick and uh, make that horn. Maybe that's where I'll put that white accent. Just get that horn nice and white there. And then there, and I'll actually erase some of those black lines. Make it even brighter. There, like that. Now you can tell he has a horn. <laughs> All right. I think I'll call it at the. Uh, actually, no. One more thing. Just the sky. Uh, it looks like it gets darker at the towards the top of the picture and lighter towards the horizon. So I'll just honor that a little bit, oops, a little bit by having a, uh, a lighter color shaded in here a little bit. Let's see. And then fade it into that color. I don't want it to look like clouds necessarily. Let's call it at that. I think that's a good picture of uh, a few buffalo chilling. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and on Thursday, I'll do puppy dogs. And uh, on tomorrow, I'll do some more music. So enjoy. I hope you have a great um, rest of your day. So take care. Buffalo. <laughs>